<laughs> Hello world, it's Curtis Potter with Boundless Inspiration. I'm doing a series on relationships. And uh, the first couple of days I did a re uh, videos on relationships with, say, a spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, etc. Um, yesterday, I talked about relationships with your work. Today, I want to talk about being intentional um, in relationships with your children. So today's video is specifically for parents, um, people that plan to be parents, and also, um, you know, even if it's fostering or even if you kind of have to parent your nieces, nephews, grandkids, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly like those are your kids, but if you're having influence on children, um, so that can even be teachers, this could go for you, um, guidance counselors, just whatever. If you're trying to become boundless in how you interact with children and the mark that you'll leave on them, um, this is the video for you. So behind me is the punching bag, right? And today, um, I just wanted to talk about that and really bring it into um, what I've witnessed. So I grew up in a broken home. My parents got divorced at six. Um, that took me into having instantly a mom, a dad, a stepmom, a stepdad, step siblings, um, step family, um, whatever you want to call it, by marriage. And for anyone that's witnessed that, it can be a mess unless you have two really mature parents that um, just realized that relationships don't always work. Um, and they went their separate ways, but they were mature about it. I stated in one of my other videos, I saw this picture of um, a set of parents with their new husband and wife on the sidelines of their kids' ball game. And it said, mom and bonus dad, dad and bonus mom. They're sitting right next together and they're all for supporting that child. Because, see, they realized that the relationship didn't work, but they also realized that, that they can't put their baggage and their, their hurt and their frustration into the kid. But, see, that's not what happens in most times. And, see, I was actually one of those kids that was, um, I just saw the percent the other day, it was somewhere around 70% of um, men who get remarried and that other woman has kids, they kind of just forget about their biological kids and they become daddy of the year to their stepchildren. And see what that does is it just wrecks them. Um, I just went and saw a movie the other day. Um, it's called Show Me the Father. I went and saw it with the men's group at our church and the movie theaters, it was an amazing movie. And I'll tell you, it was actually hard. It was hard for me to watch that movie because it was it was really showed me everything um, that I had been through in life. At the start of the movie, it talked about how many kids end up um, using drugs, alcohol, um, having sex addictions, go to jail, become rapists. Just a whole list of really, really heart wrenching information of kids that had grown up without their biological dad. Not growing up without a you know without a dad, um, their stepdad being a douchebag <laughs> pretty much, um, which I've experienced as well. But it just really has a huge effect on the kids unless you have a husband and wife, even though they separated, that are mature enough to say, you know what, regardless if we couldn't work this out, we're gonna still feed into these children. So. The thing is, is I go to speak at the youth correctional facilities here in Indiana and pretty much 99% of those kids are a product of their environment. I'd, I'd really say 100% of them because even if they grew up in a home where, you know, say they're really, really wealthy, you know, you that doesn't matter. And even if the parents were good, good at hiding the bull crap that was between them, 
See, kids pick up those vibes. They understand what's going on without even having to say it. And that goes right into them. Our children and children in general are sponges. They're learning. I mean, from the minute they come out of that womb, they're learning. Like when my wife, I mean, we took the baby out of, out of her belly and instantly put it on her chest. And that baby started breastfeeding. I mean, both of them like that. They had never done that before, but the second they got out of out of her belly, and I just appreciate her, her belly got cut open. She had C-sections twice. I mean, she went through amazing pain and stuff for my children. I greatly appreciate her. Um, but my child, my, our children were learning instantly, and they're always learning. They're learning how to talk. They're learning how to sit up. They're learning how to walk. They're learning how to everything, and they're a sponge. So what we put into them, our intentional relationship with children is what they normally take on. And see, that's why it's called a family curse is because most times the parents had this baggage on the inside that they never got healing from and then it ended up going into their kids. And that's why, I mean, I've been going to counseling and I love it. It was one of the best decisions that I've ever made because it's helping me grow and mature as a man, as a leader, as a parent, as a friend, just all aspects of my life, especially going into it, um, just telling my, my counselor, hey, you know what? I just want to focus on becoming the best version of me. So anytime I get into like the blame game, just say, hey, wait a minute. We're going to focus on you because that's all you can do is control you. If you need to talk about a story because you need to get it out, then that's cool. But let's see where you can take ownership in this situation so that you can change. And at the end of the day, you can become the best version of yourself. So I have a couple questions for parents. Um, first of all, do you have baggage that you need to get rid of? And I say this because I know there's parents out there that have PTSD. They was in the military. They, they were forced to, to see and do some stuff that they didn't want to do. And they're bottling up. Do you have some stuff you need to get rid of because you're pushing people away from your life? You're snapping on people. You're angry with people. Man, get some counseling. Please get some counseling because that's when your life will start to change. When you take ownership and you get sick and tired of being sick and tired of how you're reacting to things, how you're treating people, and you get some help and some healing, and you can because I've witnessed it. I was in a class with a guy doing this mastery class, and he was still hurting because he had to shoot a kid over in Iraq that had a bomb, a, a vest bomb, suicide bomb strapped to it, and he had to shoot that kid. And he was struggling. He knew that he saved his whole platoon. He saved like 26 soldiers, but he couldn't let himself he couldn't forgive himself for killing that kid, right? And I was glad because I went through this program. It's called Zarvos. It's a leadership and coaching um, program. And it's one of the best things I did because it just really helps people get rid of that baggage and forgiveness and take ownership and be the source and learn how to be authentic and present. I mean, it's a beautiful class. And if you want more information about it, reach out to me. I'll be happy to connect you. But see, the thing is, is like this these kid, these people that are angry, these parents, they just use their kids as punching bags, right? Because most times they're that, do what I say, how I say to do it, when I say to do it. But see, this is the thing is, I just heard this song on the radio the other day and it reminded me, my favorite song as a kid was Lean On Me. Lean on me. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend, right? And it was like, my mom knew that that was my favorite song. But she never thought about, why would that song be my son's favorite song as a child? Because I was broken. I was needing somebody to lean on. And really, I needed somebody to talk to, and I couldn't talk to my mom. I was a boy, and I needed a dad. My dad had checked out my life. He had sold me for five racks and said, peace, and I didn't see him for like eight years. Man, I was a mess, and that's why when I was nine, it was the first time I smoked weed. By the time I was 10, I was drinking alcohol, not just alcohol, I was drinking whiskey. I had been getting molested 
when my dad got remarried, there was someone in that life that was molesting me and I couldn't tell anybody. I was confused. I was hurt. I thought it, I thought it was my fault. And I was just, I was just trying to communicate, but I was so young that I didn't even know how to communicate it. I was scared to communicate it. I was scared because I was actually getting blackmailed by that person that they would tell everyone that I was gay. And then, and I knew I wasn't, but I was just so confused. And I, as the kid, didn't know how to communicate. But how many adults do you see that don't know how to communicate either? See, the thing is, is they say that it, um, studies show that they grew two plants. So what it is, this study, they grew two plants. One of the plants, they yelled at it. Rah, 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 rah. In another room, same environment, lights, everything like that. And the other one, they just talked to it calmly and they sung to the plant and they just gave it positive affirmation and see that plant that was getting yelled at and just had that toxic life it was just dying and withering and the one in the same environment it grew exponentially right that's a plant so imagine if you did that with children right this whole, the, you know what? I, I love some of the old ways of life, like the worth ethic and just, you know, the principles in life. But there's a lot of the, the past that we need to throw in the trash can, right? So for instance, that whole do as I say, not as I do. What? That's, you're a freaking hypocrite. So you're the parent yelling at these kids. For instance, I had to just, put my son in timeout yesterday for cursing. He said, you a-hole. <laughs> he said it to my daughter. And I mean, my wife kind of reacted. You want me to beat your... Well, you know what? My son has also said that before. I'll beat your... You know, it's like, Brooke, where did he learn that from? Kids, they learn them curse words from us. So we're sitting here scolding them for cursing as we're walking around cursing, right? So another one that my mom used to say to me is respect your elders. Yes, I do believe you need to respect the elders. See, the thing is, is though, I didn't learn this from my mom. I learned it from somewhere else. But respect is earned. It's not just freely given. So the thing is, is, I've had some elders disrespect me, yet they want to respect in return. I was in a situation where I was at someone's house on Christmas, and they had ruined, I'm telling you, ruined. They were so angry, and what it was was that person, none of their family that they invited to the Christmas came, right? So they made it hell for everyone else. We all got there at like 9 a.m., 10 a.m. We had lunch at noon. By 1 o'clock, you know, we had already opened presents and everything. By 1 o'clock, everybody was leaving. People were packing up their bags. Let's go. And it was all because of this one person who was angry because the people didn't come to see him for Christmas, but the dude never could take ownership. And I'll tell you, we were at my family's Christmas. I saw this dude blow up on people plenty of times. He had disrespected me and a lot of people multiple times. And I was the protector of my family. So I stood up and I said, enough, enough of this. He started running his mouth. I said, you know what? I'm big enough now. Let's go ahead and take this outside. I said, I'm about to beat your, no, I'm not going to say it, Zion. <laughs> I tried to go outside. That chump grabbed a gun. Wouldn't even go out there and fight me. Had caused that situation. Everyone was leaving Christmas. This is Christmas Day. And then he said, you know what? You're never allowed back in my house. I've never once to, this was five some years ago. I've still never been able to step foot on that house. And that person has still yet to admit that he caused that. He has two daughters that moved out on their 18th birthday. They went to school with their favorite outfits and their bags. Everything they could fit in their backpack never came home. His previous wife committed suicide. Yet still to the day, 
that person will not admit the stuff that he has caused in people's life because of his PTSD. And see, the thing is, is that something that, that a grown man affected me? And, and you know what, that situation, it was hard because the person that's, there's people that's in that house that I would love to go see. And I can't just because he said, that's my house and you won't disrespect me in my house. Yet he was dis disrespecting everyone in that house. Did anyone feel like they were a guest? They were welcomed? No, this dude needs counseling bad. And see, I tell you that story not because I'm talking down on this person or pointing my fingers. Again, that's why I say what I did in that situation and where I could have been better. I could have been a leader even though he had me out aged by 20 years. The thing is, though, is I'm telling you this story because of how hard it hurt. And I hope you can understand and feel this and really just look yourself in the mirror. This whole series has been about looking ourselves in the mirror and saying, you know what, do I have past baggage that's causing people to, to walk out of my life? See, I'm Curtis Potter Jr. And I had an issue with how I reacted to things. I wasn't always like, I would say probably 80-20 with being the one that caused the bull crap. In my life, it was more like a lot of it was happening to me. And I just reacted badly to almost all of it. So I was always saying, you know, if you give me a reason to react, then don't don't get mad at my reaction. You know what? That was just some bull crap because, see, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Are you going to get healing? Are you going to get help? When it comes to kids, are you going to be that hypocrite that says, do as I say, not as I do? Or are you going to be that leader? Are you going to feed into them like that plant? Are you going to speak to them? Are you going to listen to them? Children are smart. I saw this thing where they, um, they, I think it was over in China maybe, but they had given all these kids the opportunity to create their own business. You know, I think it was kids of like billionaires, so it was almost like indispensable money. There were some young kids that came up with some ideas that changed the world. Yet, a lot of times, for some reason, because of old, old ways, they're just like, ah, kids, shut up. Just, you, you're talking too much. You've got too much going on in your head. I invented something when I was like, uh, I was 16 actually. And I had drawn a picture. I had passed a cop car. I saw him coming. So I hit my brakes. He clocked me. I was at, by that time I was doing the speed limit. When he passed me, I took off again because I was just driving crazy. And I remembered when, that, when I was 16, I had wrote down this thing in my invention book, and I've got some inventions I need to invent because like six of them has already came out and somebody else is making money off of. But I was like, man, what if they had something on their car where they could, they could radar me from farther away and behind me, and it would read my license plate and automatically go on their computer and tell them if I'm a felon, if, I'm, if I have a warrant or anything like that. Before they even have to do anything, like it's more computers. This is when I was 16 and computers weren't even that big at that point. But yeah, a lot of times we look at kids and we're just like, we're not listening to them and trying to understand them, to lift them up and, and give them opportunities for them to reach their full potential. You know what? I, I never had anybody saying to me like, Curtis, what do you want to be when you grow up? Curtis, what would you like to do when you grow up? Curtis, you're an amazing soccer player. Are you sure that you want? Because this is the potential. I went into football and I, I was small and I didn't do as well. And then it just, you know, it, it turned out to be a, a mess. But it was like, Curtis, you know what? You have this skill set that, that is not seen around here or anywhere around. I mean, I was scouted. I won countless trophies and awards and, and played in leagues way older than me as a kid. And I didn't realize my full potential until finally I had looked back in life and, you know, I see soccer and I was like, man, I had an opportunity. And if I had the right mo role models that saw the potential in me and lifted me up, these kids that you are being involved with, you have an opportunity not to push them down, not to hold them back, not to punch them because they're your punching bag, cussing at them, yelling at them, screaming at them, telling them what to do, how to do, when to do it, say as I do, not as I do, respect your elders, even though I'm not respecting you, right? 
you have an opportunity. And see, the thing is, is this video may hurt. You may be like, you know what? I did. I've made the bad mistakes. I've hurt my, my children, my grandchildren, my nieces, my nephews, the kids in my class, the kids that should be relying on me, like those kids in the youth correctional facility. They're just hurting and they just... They have abandonment issues and, and depression and anxiety and pain and guilt and shame. The thing is, is like the movie Real Still. I watched it the other night and man, it was it was one of those movies again that was hard for me because my dad's really not still present in my life. And I just so badly want my dad to just be in my life. Like I begged him to take him out. Take me and my son out on your boat. I can't even pay the dude to take me on his boat. Yeah, I've watched my stepbrother's been on his boat like 90 times. All my nieces and nephew on my stepmom's side of the family, they've all been on his boat. Me and my, my kids never have, and I don't understand it. I just, Dad, I just want that relationship with you. And seeing that movie real still, if you haven't seen it, it's an amazing movie, robot movie. But the, the dad had checked out of his son's life for, I think the kid was 11 or something, I think, in the movie. And the mom died. And the dad had to kind of take him. He actually wasn't going to, but he saw some money in it. So he's like, he had to take the kid for a summer, and then he was going to pretty much sell him to, to his sister-in-law, who had millions and, I think, billions. And see, in the movie... The dad and the son got in this big fight. And the dad's like, I'm sorry. I know I messed up. What do you want from me? And the son said, Dad, I forgive you. I just want you to fight for me. I just want you, when you say sorry, to mean it and prove it. The best apology is change behavior. So I don't care how bad you've been to your kids. You can make a decision today. I'm going to change. The best apology is change behavior. And I'm now going to be the father of the year, not only to my stepchildren, but to my children. I'm going to fight for them. I'm going to be there for them. I'm going to prove that I'm sorry. You know what? My father said one time, I just don't know how to be a dad. You know how many books there are on how to be a, a good parent? How many books there are on how to get healing? Even if your ego won't let you go to counseling because somebody's going to tell me what I did wrong. And uh-uh, I'm not having somebody tell me what I did wrong. That's how I looked at it. And you know what? I'm sure every other person is like, I'm not going to marriage counseling. Because what? Because you got to own up to your bull crap. Is that what? <laughs> yes. But you know what? That's going to be the best day of your life. So parents... It's in your, in, the ball's in your court. Are you going to still be punching them, taking it out on them? You know what? I even heard this the other day that most times parents are taking it out on their kids the same way that their parents did. You know what? We look at our grandparents like, oh, they're amazing because they've got so much wisdom at that time and they've changed. But then what happened was that family curse went to your parents and your parents are taking it out on you. And if you don't break those chains like my wife and I are trying to do, then we're going to put it right into our kids. See, she's 27. I'm 35. Yes, I got me a little bit younger woman. She's still amazing. And when I look at her where she is at 27 compared to where I was when I was 27, man, she is way ahead of me. Like thinking about what she's going to be doing when she's 35, I just can't even wait to see how beautiful of a soul and how amazing she is. But it's like she witnessed toxicness for 27 years. So it's hard for her to get it out of her. She's got to be intentional. That's why this series is called Intentional Relationships. Because if you're not intentional in your life, life will be intentional to you. And you'll just be going through life however it comes at you. But if you're intentional, then you can determine where your life's going. You can determine how your relationships are going to be. And all it takes is a choice and taking a step forward. If you need to go to AA classes, NA classes, SA classes, 
If you just, you know what, if you don't have the courage to get counseling right now, then I suggest going to some seminars. You can just sit back in the crowd and listen to some really good stuff. And they may just, sometimes somebody says the right thing that just changes your life. Go to Eric, uh, Eric Thomas, Tony Robbins, Les Brown. Um, there's John Maxwell. There's so many amazing people that you can list. Stephen Furtick, Joyce Myers. I went to one of her seminars. I mean, her one of her um, speakings, whatever. And her speech changed my life. Not completely. I wasn't just like, I'm healed and I'm perfect. No, but it helped me get growth that I needed in one of the areas. It was actually on being molested as a child. It helped me out so much that that was one of the steps to go forward. So even if you can't go to counseling, maybe start at seminars for like, you know, 150 bucks. You can go see some of these people, $250. It'll be one of the best investments you ever make. You know what? Definitely over anything, any rims on a car, clothes, shoes, vacations, that one week of healing on the beach. You know what? Instead of going to a beach this year, go to 10 seminars and watch how much your life changes. Go to that workshop, Zarvos. I'm telling you, please, if you're interested at all, let me uh, come and see me because I'll help you go through that and I'll help you get to some of the growth. Even if you're struggling right now to be like, I ain't going to no seminar. Those are freaking blah, 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 blah. Read some books. Go to Half Price Books. You can get a book for like 4 or $5 and some of them will help you grow tremendously. Spend 20 minutes a day. I'm not spending all my day reading. I got stuff to do, you know, like watching TV because that's so important. It's going to help your life. Spend 20 minutes reading. You know what? Right before, you, you know, you watch like five different series. Tonight, I'm just going to watch four. And for that last hour that I'm wasting my life, I'm just going to go ahead and read this book. See how much your life grows. See how much your, your relationship grows with your kids, the kids in your life, your nieces, your nephews, all the youth, because they're our future. And you know what? Just like me, see, for a long time, I said, my dad didn't teach me anything because he wasn't in my life. And see, finally, I realized my dad actually taught me a lot because he taught me how I didn't want to be. See, the thing is, is I adopt things in my life that I see in other people that I, that I like. I'm like, oh man, I really like that about that person. I want to be like that. But see, also I see things where I don't want to be and I'm like, I'm not going to be like that. See, I had this pain as a kid that, that my four parents put into me. I was a product of my environment. And for a long time, I chose to pick up that family curse and put it on my shoulder like, hey, this is my baggage now. Like I didn't say it out loud like I was intentional on doing it. But that's what happens with what's called a family curse is because we pick up that baggage that our parents laid down or that the people that we trusted and looked up to laid down. But I had so much pain in my heart that I was like, once I have kids, I'm, my life's going to change. It's no longer about me and it's about them. And I'll be damned if I, if I put that into my kids and they have to feel that pain. Now, see, the thing is, is we had some kids and man, did it, some stuff happened. And it's like, Curtis, you still got some baggage that you need to get rid of that you did not get rid of before you had those kids. And see, that's why they say kids will change you because when I started seeing in my kid, like when he's cursing, I'm like, dang, Curtis, you still got some stuff you need to get rid of. And that's why I chose to go to marriage or to counseling. That's why I've been begging my wife to go to marriage counseling. And I'm just celebrating now because I know that one day she's going to walk in there with me. I'm actually about to start it without her because that's what leaders do. I'm going to start it without her. And I know one day she's going to walk in there. And I'm going to just celebrate when she walks in there with me because I know that that's going to be the next level of our relationship. And you know what? I love my wife to death, but like I know that's when our relationship's going to flourish and we're going to show our kids how to be. And then just knowing that they're going to go through less pain in their relationships is just weight lifted off my shoulders. And I'm excited. And the thing is, I'm going to say, Brooke, now that you're in marriage counseling, we're never going to stop. I don't care if we're 95 years old, we'll be going once a month. Because even then, I'll probably be walking around with my cane and, and she'll be like, hey, honey. And I'll be like, what? And she'll be like telling the marriage counselor, he needs to turn the volume up on his hearing aids. I don't know. But that's the thing is, is 
I'm so grateful that I got a place in my life where I said, you know what? I'm going to continue every single day trying to be a better version of myself than yesterday. There's one thing that's for certain in life, and that's change. Look at technology today compared to back when we are when you know I was five. And you know what? We're all going to be in flying cars sooner or later. They're already out there in self-driving cars, self-parallel parking cars, cars that already fly and hover. It's going to happen. So change, you it's going to come. You can't do anything about it. But why do we resist change? Because it's hard and we got to look ourselves in the mirror and say, man, I'm not perfect and I got some flaws I need to address. But I'm telling you, that was the best day in my life when I said, no more focusing on changing other people. I'm going to focus on changing me and becoming the best version of me. Because if not, I'm going to pass down that family curse right to my kids. If this video helped you, or you know someone it, it would, just please like, share, comment. Those three things, like, share, comment, or you can love, share, comment. Because see, the thing is, is that's how your people are gonna see this video too. They may be a kid that's been damaged and they need to see a video like this. They may be the parent that's damaging a kid. Their whole family may be in that toxic circle. I just lost my brother-in-law. And it's because he never got healing. And it wasn't even, you know, I do know it was some about his parents, but it was because he lost his best friend. He was a construction worker that got hit by a car while working on I-69 and got killed. Him and his friends that were like the three amigos, four amigos or whatever, that none of them could get over it and they all ended up dying now. He was the last one that passed away because he couldn't get that healing. All because he lost his friend resorted to drugs, alcohol. So I don't know what it is you're, you're resorting to. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, sex, bars, strippers, anger, lust, anxiety, depression, pills. I don't know what it is. You, you may be a gym rat because you're just so mad and putting out on the weights. I've done that before as well. I've done it all. I've seen it all and I've struggled and I've messed up enough to just be here to tell you that you can get healing too. You just got to make that decision that I'm going to trade where I put my faith. I'm not putting my faith in all that bull crap anymore. I'm going to put it in, in the right things, the books, the seminars, the motivational uh, videos, the, the motivational podcasts like Ed Milet, Rewire, Rewire Your Brain by Ryan Stuman. Man, um, there's some amazing ones out there. And I just please, I just invite you to seek them. Like, share, comment. If you want to be bold, tag somebody in this. If you want to be bold, tag yourself in it. If you just want to help somebody and hope they see it, send it in a text message, send it in a DM, whatever it is you got to do. Because every single day, we're just getting a step closer to being balanced, especially in our relationships, especially with our parenting, especially with any kid that's in our life. So you know the drill. <laughs> Be boundless. I love y'all. Have a great day.